Hi, this is the Science Chef. In this video, I'll share with you the tips that will help you make an A1 in chemistry. So if you sure want to ace your chemistry in this year's West African Senior School Certificate Examination, then endeavor to watch this video to the end. The wire chemistry exam, just like its school science subjects, is made up of three components. Paper 1, which is objective test or multiple choice questions. Paper 2 is the essay, while paper 3 is the practical test. Let's look at the weight or value of one mark in each paper. The objective test, which contains 50 questions, has a total of 50 marks. This means that the value of one question is one mark. The paper contributes a weight of about 20% to the overall score of the subject. This means that each correct question answered in the multiple choice test has a weight of about 0.4% obtained by dividing 20% by 50. The essay consists of four questions made up of 100 marks. Each question carries 25 marks. The paper is made up of two sections, section A and section C for Nigerian, Sierra Leonean and Liberian candidates. Section A is compulsory, while you'll be expected to answer only three out of four questions in section C. Section B is for Ghanaian candidates. The essay has a weighted score of about 40%. This means that the value of one mark N in the essay paper is also about 0.4%, which is obtained by dividing 40% by 100. The paper 3, which is a practical examination, just like the objective test, is made up of 50 marks shared among three questions. This paper contributes a weight of 40% to the overall score which means that the value of one mark end is about 0.8% obtained by dividing 40% by 50. From this analysis, you can see that the practical test carries the highest weight, while the essay and objective tests have equal or almost equal weights. With this, you can know where to lay more emphasis on. Don't get us wrong. All the three components are important and you must perform very well in all of them if you must make that A1. But you will have to be more strategic with paper 3 than others. Now that we know the value of one mark in each of the components, let's now analyze each paper based on the probability of good performance. The practical test is the easiest to pass of all the three papers because whether you believe it or not, your teachers can easily predict the nature of the questions based on their fair knowledge of the specimens. Therefore, you must obey all instructions given to you by your teachers, especially with regards to the volumetric analysis. This is because whatever you present as a title value report will be marked based on your teacher's report. It is important to note here that passing chemistry does not depend on how intelligent you are, rather depends on how obedient you are to your teacher's instructions and how smart you are as a student. Note that what you do in the laboratory on the examination day is less important than your reports. Your examiner will grade you based on your reports and not your activities. So be smart. The volumetric or quantitative analysis questions always have a total of about 20 to 27 marks, with the table of values and average title taking a whooping 10 marks. Under these questions, you must master how to calculate concentration in grams by dm cube when you are given the mass and volume of a substance. Concentration in moles by dm cube when you are given the concentration in grams by dm cube and molar mass of a substance. Or when you know the concentration of A or B, their volumes and mole ratio. Molar mass of a compound when you know its concentration in grams per dm cube and concentration in moles per dm cube. You must also master how to calculate percentage purity or percentage by mass of a substance in a mixture, percentage of water crystallization in a hydrated salt and unknown number of molecules of water crystallization in a mole of the hydrated salt. You should also master how to calculate the number of moles of a substance present in a given volume of its solution and the number of ions present, etc. Question 2 of this paper is on the identification of cations, anions, and gases, which you can easily know from the reagent given in the question. For example, when you see barium chloride and hydrochloric acid, 
there is a high probability that you'll be testing for the sulfate ions. Similarly, silver nitrate and nitric acid plus aqueous ammonia will let you know that the examiner wants you to test for a halide ion, which most times is the chloride ion. Likewise, aqueous ammonia and aqueous sodium hydroxide will inform you that you'll be testing for a cation. And depending on the color of the solution and precipitate formed, you can easily predict the type of cation. If you're asked to add aqueous sodium hydroxide to a solution and heat gently, there's a very high possibility that you'll be testing for ammonium ions. If you are asked to add a dilute acid to a solid salt, there's every tendency that it is a carbonate or hydrogen carbonate. When asked to heat a dry solid salt, it will be likely that you may be working on a carbonate, hydrogen carbonate, or ammonium salt or a hydrated salt which can be known based on their effect on moist litmus paper and formation of droplets etc. Usually the total marks here are between 15 to 21 marks and it is very possible for a student to earn all the marks for question 1 and 2 of the practical test if he or she pays attention to details. Question 3 is always on the general test of applied knowledge of chemistry principles like preparation of gases, tests for oxidizing and reducing agents, separation techniques, preparation of standard solutions, dilution factor, tests for cations and anions, physical and chemical properties of substances, etc. And the total marks for this question always range from 7 to 10 marks. So if a student can earn a minimum of 5 marks from this question, and add that to the 40 or more marks end from questions 1 and 2, then you will already be on the way to your A1 in wire chemistry with a 45 over 50 or 90% score in the practical tests. The next paper with the lesser ease of passing is the paper 1, that's the objective test. This paper tends to test the candidate's understanding of general concepts of chemistry and covers the whole syllabus. The teacher has no control over this paper because no one knows exactly which topics the questions will come from. However, with a good preparation, it is easier to pass the objectives than the essay. Being a multiple choice paper, the options in each question can guide you or give you an idea of what the answer should be, even if you are not familiar with the question. To be sure of your A1 in chemistry, you must answer a minimum of 45 multiple choice questions correctly as that will guarantee you a 90% in the objectives. We are recommending these high scores for paper 1 and 3 because they are easier to maneuver than paper 2. Also, the grading system of the examination body is not fixed. It actually depends on the general performance of the candidates on that subject. This means that A1 starting from 75% in any paper, as many are made to believe, is not cast in stone because if more than 50% of the candidates make 75% and above in a given subject, then the bar could be raised to 85% to have what we call a normal distribution curve. In this curve, 15% of the candidates that wrote an examination will be well above average and another 15% will be considered to be well below average, while the remaining 70% will fall within the slightly above average to the slightly below average band. So with 90% in your practical and objectives, you are 60% on your way to acing your chemistry. If you are learning anything from this video, kindly drop a comment and hit the like button. We would love to hear from you. And if this is your first time here, kindly subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Lastly, paper 2 is the most difficult and most complex to pass of the three papers. This is because it requires a deep understanding of the general concepts of the subject to perform excellently. Like the multiple choice, nobody has an idea about the nature of the questions nor the topics that would be tested. That's why it is always advisable to fully cover your syllabus before the day of the examination. To make an A1 in this paper, you need to correctly answer only 3.5 questions out of 4 and you'll be good to go. Remember, all questions carry equal marks. Here, you need to master your definitions, laws and principles and when answering your questions, always go straight to the point because of the limited space available for your answers. Please don't leave any question blank. Even if you think you don't know the answer, 
just write down that nonsense in your head because that nonsense could turn out to be the sense that the examiner wants and one mark can make a great difference. Always start with your strongest foot which means you should always move from your easier question to your tougher questions. Above all, after covering your syllabus, practice as many past questions as possible for each paper to test your understanding of the topics. You can do that using your WIAC pack. During such revisions, never cram the answers at the back, rather use your notebooks, textbooks and other revision materials to find the answers yourself. If you do all this and can still get the correct answers, then consult your teachers for further explanation, but never cram the answers. This is because not all the answers in the pack are correct, and there is no guarantee that the question will be repeated exactly the way it is in the pack. But with a good understanding of the concepts behind the question, no matter how it is twisted, you will be able to provide the correct answer. So if this video was helpful to you in any way, kindly drop a comment and give us a like. Subscribe to our channel if this is your first time here and turn on your notification bell to always stay updated with our new uploads. A wise man once said, He who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. But he who knows not and knows that he knows not is wise. So keep learning till I see you when I'll see you.